If you are new to Power Automate, these are five things you need to know. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I'll share the most important thing you should do as a Power Automate newbie. Number one, use a manual trigger. When possible, use a manual trigger while you are building and testing out your flow. If your flow requires an automated trigger, the trigger can be replaced once you've confirmed your flow works. Instead of using the when an item is created or modified trigger or for a selected item trigger, use the manual trigger and the get item action. Select your site address and list name. The ID column is hidden by default. Click on Add Column and then click on Show or Hide Columns. Check off the ID column. Enter any item ID from your SharePoint list to use for testing purposes. This makes it easy for me to quickly trigger my flow and make adjustments while building it rather than having to go into my SharePoint list and create a new item or select an item to trigger the flow. Instead of using the when a file is created properties only trigger, use the manual trigger. Depending on your flow, use a get file content using path or get file metadata using path action. Select your site address and select a file from your document library to use for testing purposes. Instead of using a recurrence trigger, use a manual trigger with a date and text input to mimic a specific day of the week and time of day. Customize these inputs to suit your testing needs. This can be helpful when you are building flows that involve dates and times. Insert a compose action to store the custom date and time so that it's in a date time format that can be used throughout your flow. First, insert the dynamic content from your date input and add a capital T and the dynamic content from the text input for the time of day. For demonstration purposes, I'll add another compose action to format the date and time from above. I'll add an expression and insert the format date time function. Next, I'll insert the outputs from the compose action above. Add a comma and single quotes. I'll insert this as my date time format and run a test. I'll select a date and enter an hour. This compose action has the dynamic date and time from the values inputted. This compose action has the formatted date and time. In this flow example, I'm using the get emails action to search for a specific email draft with the subject line that, that contains the day of the week from the dynamic date and the word post. I have an email draft with the subject line of Monday post. I'll run this flow and select next Monday as a date and enter a time. Because I was able to select a specific date, the action was able to find the Monday post email draft. Once my flow is ready to go, I can delete the manual trigger and replace it with the appropriate trigger. Because I've used this compose action to store the dynamic date and time, and I've also used it throughout my flow, all I need to do is replace the content of this compose action with the UTC now function. Depending on how you've inserted your dynamic content, you may need to replace some of the dynamic content in your flow when you replace the trigger of your flow. Since today is Friday and I also have an email draft with the subject line of Friday post, I'll run another test.
Number two, compose and test. Compose actions are great for newbies to power automate. They are super handy when it comes to troubleshooting, and if you are a beginner, it can help you better understand what's going on in your flow. These are three ways I use compose actions in my flow. Number one, return account of items. If I'm using a get items, get files, get events, filter array, or any action that returns an array of items in my flow, I like to add compose actions after with an expression to return the count of items. This way, I can verify the flow is returning the number of items I'm expecting it to return. Use an expression and insert the length function. Insert the outputs of the array into the function. Number two, hold the value of the current item. If I'm using an apply to each action in my flow, I like to add a compose action to store the current item value. The outputs of this compose action can be helpful, especially if you need to access the content in an expression. It's also helpful to know what item you are currently looping through if you run into issues with your flow. Number three, store strings of text. For example, if I'm posting an adaptive card in my flow, rather than having to come into the adaptive card JSON to make edits, I use compose actions to store all the text for my adaptive card. I can easily see which compose actions I need to edit for which part of my adaptive card, rather than trying to find the right spot in the JSON to edit. Break your flow into chunks and run tests often before you try to build out your entire flow. Running tests between each section will help you to catch any potential issues early on with your flow before you get too far into development. Number three, use the test button instead of the save button. Save yourself one extra click by using the test button instead of the save button. I will admit sometimes I have a bad habit of pressing save. Once you save your flow initially, you can use the test button instead of the save button. If you are using a manually triggered flow, this button will save and trigger a test with a single click. Number four, use the top count. There are a few actions in Power Automate that include a top count field. Take advantage of that field when building and testing out a flow. By specifying the top count, you can limit the number of items returned from these actions. Rather than returning all the items in your list, rows from your Excel table, or files from a document library, limit the number of items returned by entering in a top count. Depending on the complexity of your flow, you may need to return a higher number of items. Adjust this number to suit your needs. This will speed up your flow run, which is essential when testing and building out a flow. Number five, use your email. If your flow includes any actions that notify a user, such as the post adaptive card or send an email v2 action, always use your email in the recipient field until you've tested your flow and confirmed it works. In some of my more complex flows, I use a compose action to hold the email address of the final recipient or recipients. If your flow contains a lot of actions, the number of dynamic content options to select from can be overwhelming. Also, no one wants to receive your test emails or messages, especially if you haven't worked out the logic to your flow. In my send an email v2 action, I'll add a bit of text at the top and insert the outputs from the compose action that contains the final recipient. This will help me to confirm if the dynamic content of the email matches the recipient of the email. I'll run a quick test. Now that I've confirmed that the send an email action is working correctly, I can easily swap my email address for the outputs of the compose action that contains the final recipient. I can also delete this first line. Lastly, please remember to rename your actions. This is especially important when you are using an action multiple times throughout your flow. Each action you add to your flow must have a unique name. When you add an action multiple times to your flow, Power Automate will automatically append a number to the end of it. To rename your action, click on the three dots, 
and select Rename. When your actions are named, it makes it easier to select dynamic content from the list. Without renaming your actions, would you really remember what Compose 6 was storing? If you found this video helpful and would like to see more videos like this, please consider giving it a like. What other concepts are you struggling with in Power Automate? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any other Power Automate tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.